Hello viewers, and welcome back. We don't have to watch all this. We know we know what's... Okay, that's, yeah, thank you, Wayne. We know what's going on. <clears throat> at first I thought, hey, maybe we'll watch the thing again. I really like that part he says at the end about the old road taking you to hell. But you know what? Uh, no. Because everybody was going to fast forward anyway. I know it, you know it, you guys have seen it. I have a hard time believing that anybody out there is watching this series who did not watch the old series and also has never played the game and also has never seen anybody else stream the game. I, I understand my place in the world, okay? I'm nobody's first stop. What are we, what are we waiting on here? All right. Reynold, Dismas, guys, how you doing? <clears throat> Apparently we're going to have to go through all the tutorial screens again. Not really a big deal. Yeah, I know. The hamlet is just ahead. Uh, so, it's New Game Plus. What's different? I don't exactly know. It's harder. See? Dismiss and Reynold in the state that they're always in when you start the game. Oh no! brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. Okay. So, there has since been a patch. Uh, the Antiquarian update released between the last episode I recorded and this one. And it's changed <clears throat> a couple of things. For one thing, uh, a new class, the Antiquarian. Maybe we'll see one. I, I reckon, at some point, before the game is over. Another thing that's changed is the Highwaymen. <clears throat> they buffed the Highwaymen. Wicked Slice now has bonus damage. Open Vein reduces people's bleed resist. And this is really cool. Duelist's Advance now activates Repost. He gains a Repost now when, he, when you do Duelist's Advance. So a lot of stuff to, uh, to buff up the melee Highwaymen. Uh, the ranged Highwaymen didn't really need help. This is... Okay. Sure, <clears throat> you know, this is from the intro. We, uh, surely nothing good can come of a dialogue with the dead. You know what, don't... Okay, I guess they weren't kidding. There is much to be found in forgotten places. That's not my favorite start ever. Yes. Oh yes, I'm aware. <clears throat> well... So what's different? There's a couple of important things. Uh, number one, I don't know exactly the depth of this, but I know that there are stat changes to the enemies. I expect that these things will become clearer as we go on. Did this change? No, this skill is still garbage. Okay, whatever. Ignore the guy in the back. We'll just have to tear through this guy real quick. I'm not going to take the time to keep rearranging and whatever. We'll just we'll just gut this guy. The tip was a trap. Reynolds <laughs> like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? <clears throat> Unless he's talking about uh, the tip that led them here to the hamlet, because that was definitely a trap. He's a hundred percent right about that. How many points of bleed does he have on him now? I think it's unlikely that Reynold's gonna get there. <laughs> He's even suspicious of Reynold now. Reynold's probably not gonna get ten here. Yeah, he de <laughs> definitely didn't didn't pull it off. But we probably won't have to endure another turn from this guy. I think we got it under control now. It gnaws at the back of my mind. What's well, coming from the front? I, at this juncture, we'll go ahead and. Uh, the, the sharpened blade. 
if Reynold had attacked the guy, the uh, the big enemy there, the blood letter, uh, he would have killed him. But also, it would have caused a corpse to drop. In this instance, it was way better not to attack because enemies that die from bleed and blight damage do not leave corpses behind. And Reynold has no way of attacking around a corpse. Hey! A trinket that's actually useful. Right away. Yes, I... Okay. It should not show you that stuff. This is always trapped, isn't it? I believe. Yes. That's fine. He deserves it. Do we make money off of the two food we didn't eat? We do. Look at all that value. Uh, so, I keep starting and then stopping. Let's finish the narration. What's different on New Game Plus? I wish they didn't call it New Game Plus. It has none of the characteristics of New Game Plus. What it is is Hard Mode. What's different on Hard Mode? Such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now. And you are bound to them. Wayne, shut up. What's different on Hard Mode? There are now ways to actually lose the game. There are two ways to lose the game. Number one, if you take too long, that's what this weak counter is for. If we pass week 91, we will lose the game. Uh, number two, deaths. If we suffer 13 hero deaths, I believe 13, we can probably check on the graveyard. Yeah. Most yeah. Will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth. Awaiting merciful oblivion. We'll get these two. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Uh, as you can tell, there have been absolutely no changes to Wayne. He is still as chatty as humanly possible. Um, so, deaths and time. There's a clock now. What this means for us, in a practical sense, is that losing a hero is even worse than it once was because of the number of missions that you have to run to bring a new uh, a hero back up to speed. However, in the intervening patch, they've introduced this experienced recruits line to the stagecoach. Uh, these unlock when you get your blacksmith and guild stuff up to the appropriate levels and this allows you to get higher level heroes coming in via the stagecoach up to uh, up to level yeah I mean you can you can read seems real important to me uh, we're gonna do oh another thing they added is the ability to trade heirlooms for other types as you can see uh, the exchange rate is not very good but we can now trade heirlooms for other types of heirlooms, so it's no longer the case that we're going to run across just a kind being dead. Um, <clears throat> yet another thing that's happened is that they no longer... Of madness and morbidity. Okay. Your work begins. They no longer associate uh, a particular type of heirloom with an area. So now uh, the heirloom that you get as a reward for completing missions is always random and is no longer tied to the area in which the missions appear, which means that we won't have to spend the first 60% of the game entirely in the wield. That's good for us. Um, the other thing that the timer means is that we probably do not have time to clear all the bosses. We probably will ignore the red tier bosses entirely, I think it's it's difficult for me to imagine a situation where it'd be worth worth fighting them. Uh, we may also not bother getting our heroes to level six. There's not really a strong difference between level five and level six in a lot of games. Your hero's level is sort of a, a base value for all of their stats. In Darkest Dungeon, level increases almost nothing. When you gain a level, all of your resistances go up, and um, I think honestly that's it. All of your resistances go up and you gain the ability to equip better weapons and armor. And your weapons and armor are where all of your important stats come from. But there's no difference between the gear that can be worn by a level 5 and the gear that can be worn by a level 6. The only things are, that will be different is that our, the resistances will be slightly higher. 
it's probably not worth getting people to six. We'll see how we feel about that when we get up to the uh, when we get up to the level. So, also they've rebalanced the costs on things a little bit. I don't know exactly how that works out. Um, I guess we'll see. Haven't been back at the beginning in a while. It's a bit of a strange feeling. Well, let's uh, let's upgrade our stagecoach. I want to get more heroes available. Because we got to start recruiting. Um, other big changes in the patch. Nothing really I can think of, I guess. Um, the other big change, obviously, is the addition of the Antiquarian, who is an interesting character. The Antiquarian is terrible at fighting. And good at treasure. When you have an Antiquarian in your party, first of all, uh, the amount of treasure that you get from... Okay, yeah, you have incision. The amount of treasure that you get from uh, the dungeon is increased by way of these antiques that only the anti you can only find if there's an antiquarian in your party. They're worth gold. Uh, they stack up in your inventory. I don't know the exact details of that, but, you know, jam more stuff in your inventory slots. So the other thing that I know about the antiquarian is that if you have an antiquarian in your party, gold stacks up to 2,000 in a slot instead of 1,500. Uh, which obviously on mediums and longs will mean that you're bringing home a lot of extra gold. Uh, so I'm excited to employ an antiquarian when we get the chance. I don't know how hard combat's going to be, honestly. It may be the case that uh, it's dangerous to bring... Oh, dear. We've got a Vestal who literally can't attack from the back. Uh, can we rejigger this party from the back? You can pistol shot and tracking shot, but not grave shot blast. This is a rough group of skills, and we can't, uh, we don't have access to the guild yet. We can't change their skills. Um, it's important to note that disorienting blast does stun people now. Uh, that's been the case for a couple of patches, but I never use it because I'm so used to. Uh, the old Plague Doctor. So if we move you any further back, you won't be able to stab people. You'll only be able to throw Plague Grenades and stun. <clears throat> but if we have you way back here, you can't use Open Vein or... You know what? We're, we're going to deprioritize Dismas because he's going in paranoid because we don't have a choice. Pistol Shot's a fine skill. It'll be alright. This is... <laughs> You start out in a little bit of a mess here. Uh, we're not going to find eight trinkets that we need to bring home and also a full inventory worth of stuff. We can afford to equip our thing here. Alright, so we're going to have to be efficient. I haven't done any of the math yet. I will do the math on um, what we have to... Yeah. Measured now in gold. Later in blood. Why does this always win? I haven't done the math yet on how how many shorts we can afford to do. There's there's some math to be done XP wise, just efficiency, bring everybody up as quickly as possible. We're, but we're definitely going to have to tend toward um. Bloody hell! Why can't I think? We're gonna have to tend toward uh, longs as much as possible because we need to get as much XP jammed into our people in as little eaten game time as we can. Yeah, this seems fine. I really, I legitimately don't know how much more difficult combat's going to be, so we may have to, if you'll remember, uh, we had to adjust our tactics a little bit as we started hitting reds, because um, in the early game, it's all about normal mode, it's all about managing your gold, which means not letting people get so stressed out that you have to de-stress them if you can afford that. <clears throat> if you can afford to make choices that prevent people from getting stressed. Um, but when you get to reds, it starts to be the case that you actually do have to worry about enemy damage as well. You can almost disregard the damage that enemies deal on the 
lower difficulty. Well, that's disappointing. Are you gonna say something creepy now? Are you gonna try to bum us all out? Press disadvantage. Give them no quarter. Yes, I know. They probably ought to educate you about corpses the first time one drops, like... Oh, good start. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Okay. Um, when we got to Red Dungeons, we had to start actually caring about the, the damage that the monsters dealt. So, we're probably going to have to do that earlier. Seems bent on, preventing passage. on hard mode. I don't know if we'll have to do it here in in uh, the greens, but it may it might start a little earlier. Uh, okay, our Vestal cannot, under any circumstances, hit the third row. Do I want to focus on... Yeah, I think I still probably want to focus on her, especially with Dismiss already freaked out. He's going to be whispering sweet, stressful nothings into everybody's ear. That's four damage at this rank, right? Okay. Well, to be perfectly honest, we may just have to endure her, uh, her nonsense. Good, good enough there, Dismas. Good enough. That'll do. Continually onslaught. Destroy them all. The other thing that the time limit means for us um, is that we probably will have to make some runs with some pretty non-ideal compositions from time to time because I can't afford... Trinkets and baubles. I can't afford to just uh, be like, oh, well, this is this boss's loot is non-ideal, or I don't have exactly the people I'd like. Let's just uh, run a run a, a group that doesn't matter and see if things line up a little better next week. We're probably going to have to be a little bit more efficient than that. Uh, there's pretty high value in getting a blight onto her right away. I considered going for the incision. Just bringing this guy down. Well, yeah. Is that even, like, is that a stressful revelation? Did you not know that they want us dead? Was it not given away by the way they are swinging swords at us? And Anyway. We're very good at leaving people at one. I wish I had Grape Shot Blast right now. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Uh, not good at healing in this position. I will give her some food. So the combat's going to be pretty straightforward for these greens, at least. Um, I am going to record every week. Unlike last time, where I stopped recording the easier missions after a certain point, I, I do intend to record every week of this difficulty. So we are going to... You are going to, unfortunately... See me running a bunch of greens in a way that's not terribly different from what I was already... Uh, from what I was doing in the last... Wow, he failed that. Well, at least he's already gone mad. Cruel machinations spring to life. With a singular purpose. Couple of uh, couple of non-ideal roles there. In radiance, may we find victory. By the way, he said that thing about uh, did you watch that? Because I tried to use a torch with him selected. 
He's too paranoid to light a torch. These guys have a high observed crit rate. I'm just trying to keep the rest of the party from stressing out too much. Especially since we're not going to be able to... Um... Oh, that's a shame. We're not going to be able to run a brand new party. We're only going to get three people off the stagecoach, so one of these four has to go back in. And uh, which one that is is going to depend largely on the output of the stagecoach. There you go. 20 damage already. Randall knows a thing or two. Okay, that's got him. At this juncture, I think a heal is, is probably uh, pretty reasonable. She was down to 5 health. Yeah, she would have gone to death store here. Put us in a bit of a dangerous position. <laughs> well, congratulations, you've really shown us. Unfortunately, uh, in the second position, she just doesn't have the, the healing output that we would like. Uh, which one of our things is getting discarded? This one. We definitely are not going to... Uh... There we go. Came back for the curio, obviously. Want to really uh, maximize my my gold here. Is the task that he was that he's referring to there would seem to be opening that bag. I guess Reynold did a pretty good job of opening the bag. I don't really think it's that difficult, so I guess I didn't really I didn't really consider it. Wow, that's a lot of food. The light, the promise of safety. Yeah, the hell? Eat the other one. So as you know, when you attempt to, or as you I probably know, when you attempt to help a character, use a helpful skill or something on a character who has an affliction, they will sometimes refuse. Okay, we do have a shovel. Um, but I think they probably should fix it so that that doesn't happen anymore outside of combat. Because, like, if they refuse some food, you can just right-click on the stack of food again, you know? I think we still have a key, even. So this should be fairly profitable. Screw this guy. Good screw. Alright, if we have any luck at all, we're going to get a, uh... We're going to get a uh, Plague Doctor turn before this guy gets his turn. And we may not have to endure any of his pimp cup full of acid nonsense. I'm really not super clear on what Blight is supposed to represent. The subtitles... Uh, this is kind of unrelated, because his cup attack doesn't Blight. I just was thinking about it. Um... They use the word disease a lot, but first of all, Blight acts very quickly. Really far too quickly for it to have anything to do with disease. And secondly, disease would not work at all on a skeleton, right? If it's affecting a skeleton, it pretty much has to be something like acid. Okay. Dismas does what our plague doctor could not. Or at least chose not to. What's your name? Grouche? Grouchit, maybe? Uh, let's... Stun that. Awesome. That is a good result. Okay, dead. Maybe it was a... Maybe that was wrong. Maybe I should have comforted. 
Cause she could totally die now. Uh, sadly, we have no ability to heal her with anybody in the party except for her. Ah, uh, you showed him. Well, at least you've got a buff, I guess. Okay. Ouch. Alright, a bit of good luck. Please don't get stunned. Okay, well, I guess... I guess she's staying at death's door for a while. That's definitely uh, put some pressure on us. And this guy needs to be tapped. Just, just a little love. Okay, there you go. All right, I think we'll be fine now. You know, maybe that's uh, maybe that's overconfidence talking. I suppose we do have uh, bulwark of faith. Him marking himself might might be sufficient to draw off this thing's attacks. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It didn't really matter in either direction. Just having him pass and he gained stress would have been fine. No critical heals for us. Sad times. On to the task's end. Okay, not a bad haul for a short green. <clears throat> you know, it's still pretty early in the episode. And we're still having a, an easy enough time with things. The beginning missions are pretty short. Sickly is irrelevant. Eldritch Slayer turns out to be very important. What with the Darkest Dungeon... Uh, I almost wonder if it's worth locking in Eldritch Slayer. <laughs> I almost never lock in positive traits, just because, um... In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Just because I feel that the value of it is pretty low relative to the Fresh value of gold. Cards and curtain rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. Right, well, first of all, we recruit everybody. The webs have been dusted, the pews set straight. The Abbey calls to the faithful. Secondly, word is traveling. Ambition is stirring in distant cities. All right, we can use this. That we can, and indeed must. Let us. Oh wait, let's not just soldier on. There's a bunch of people who probably would like to have their stress removed. Okay, Dismas is a known cheat, but he can do everything else. He may as well pray, I suppose. Can we upgrade the Abbey? We can. Gilded icons and dogmatic rituals. For some, atomic against the bloodshed. All right, let's look at this party. Hold on, hold on. Let's uh, let's construct our next party. So we're gonna want to go for a longer. What is this? Oh, interesting. That one is fine. We're definitely gonna want to go on a long. Um, I suspect it's still the case that we need deeds. They rebalance the costs of some upgrades, but I suspect deeds are still going to be our, our most important thing by far, so that's made this decision. Uh, so how are we doing this? Let's go you. Fitzroy has stab, so we'll put him in the third slot. You are... Also a guy that would kind of like to be in the third slot. The party could be... This? No, he, he can't be back row, because all he can do is these skills that don't do anything in combat. That would be terrible. Oh, how I wish you had Abyssal Artillery. <clears throat> well. So yeah, basically we're, we're bringing somebody along here that's not useful. And it's the Chester. <laughs> Pretty much no matter what. 
Well, his bleeding attacks are not that great in any case, because we'll be in the ruins. We're fighting a lot of skeletons. Slice off at least does it does okay damage. Yeah, I think we're gonna go like this. We'll sacrifice if we've gotta sacrifice somebody's damage potential, it's gonna be the jesters, because the jester's already quite bad. Oh, he's bad to the point that I don't even want to bring him. Yeah, we'll just we'll just bring Groshit. Honestly, this jester's probably gonna get fired. As soon as we have somebody who can take his slot. Yes, I know how that works. So bring all the food. We have so few options at the beginning of the game. That's kind of, uh, it's a little bit jarring. Um, there's lots of stuff that likes holy water. Good enough. Out the horns right. of your lineage once familiar. Now, Oren. As far as the order of these two, it do it doesn't actually matter. And I've set them in this order. Um because this is the order they're going to end up in. Pretty much no matter what we do. Rampart moves you forward. Alright. Game's trying to build up a false sense of security by giving us the easiest encounter. The easiest encounter short of the first encounter in Darkest Dungeon 1, which does not contain enemies that are capable of damaging you in any way. Uh, I probably should say this, though, on that subject. Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. Well, that wasn't a pack, exactly. I will say this, uh, there are going to be spoilers. I'm going to talk about the Darkest Dungeon, it's just a thing that's gonna happen. Because it's relevant to our decision-making process. So, if you are not down with hearing about the Darkest Dungeon, um, don't watch. I know it's kind of like a shitty thing to say, I'll just turn it off, but, um, that's how it is. I have a whole other series that you can watch. Uh, the first Darkest Dungeon series that I did. Feel free to watch that. Enjoy it. It rules. It probably doesn't rule, but I want you to think that it rules. I want to feel like it rules so that I can feel better. Uh, I'm not that worried about this bleed. I really wish that the, the blight had stuck on him, because I would love to have just let him blight out so that we didn't have to deal with the corpse. One of the side effects of not really having the ability to build our party composition, just kind of having to go with whoever is available, is that this party is not set up for fighting, uh, all, for, <clears throat> sorry, this party is not set up for all of the situations we're going to face. We're going to run into parties that have dangerous stuff in the back that we just almost don't even have a way of dealing with. We can blight them and we can wait. Those are pretty much our options. Get him, boys. And then hack his corpse to pieces. In an episode or two, we'll be all caught up with sort of the basic functionality of the Hamlet, and uh, this will cease to be a problem. On the plus side, that skill does move people. Yeah, I know. I see that they have not fixed the uh, problem of the heroes taking excessively long times to say things. Okay, 14. That's a pretty good start. Why don't you always hit like that?
Oh. Damn. I was hoping we could uh, stun him without dealing lethal damage to him so that we could guarantee that the occultist would be able to get a heal off. Alright, lots of curios. Glittering gold, trinkets and baubles. Paid for in blood. Well, we're gonna start letting our light tick down here a little bit in anticipation of camping. Camping, of course, refills your torch to full, so. If you want to be maximally efficient with your light, you can use the campfire as though it is four torches. It just means that you have to light your torch tick all the way down. <clears throat> I do not like to interact with the stack of books. Maybe this is partly superstition, basically. I just had like a lot of bad experiences. Uh, I do not know what the odds are. Oh, you jerk. Yeah. When we get the um, sanitarium available, we will be removing the kleptomaniac quirk. Uh, I'm not going to pray at the altar. The altar gives you a buff that lasts until you camp. Uh, we will not be camping prior to, or we will not be fighting prior to camping. I was hoping we might get a scout. It's not that likely with the layout. But, uh... Basically, praying at that altar right now would do effectively nothing. We'll get the buff and then it will go away before we do combat. Leaving it gives us the option of coming back and hitting it if we'd like to uh, after the camp. In fact, not only does treasure not staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption, it causes worldly corruption. It's almost almost exclusively the cause of worldly corruption. So we're gonna we're gonna go to as many places as we can afford to go to. Uh, this is bandages, right? No, it's it, oh, this is medicinal herbs. This is why we brought those medicinal herbs. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, we'll put it on him. He is currently the most stressed of our party. Snake oil has a powerful, um, powerful placebo effect. And the placebo effect is, you know, fairly frequently good enough. It's remarkable how much better you feel if you think that you feel better. I think this might be medicinal herbs as well. It's either medicinal herbs or anti-venom. I don't remember. Either, in either case, we don't have it. But what we do have is a sapphire that we just synthesized somehow. Don't ask me. Uh, in case you don't know, in the dark, uh, you take a lot of extra stress from things. Monsters are more accurate and more damaging. It is more likely that you'll be surprised when beginning an encounter, but you get a lot of bonus loot. A moment of respite. All right. A chance to steal oneself against the coming horrors. The fact that we just had two hunger events makes me a little bit nervous about feasting as opposed to just eating a full meal. I'm going to do it anyway, because I love stress relief. But we basically cannot now um, use food to heal outside of combat. It's too dangerous. Alright, so we will spend three of our time units preventing an ambush, even though the, rit the ritual is a little bit of a stressor. Then we'll spend five of our time units taking that stress back off and in fact to some degree immunizing us against future stress 
And then we have four time units left, which I think is going to go to tactics. Everybody dodge and crit. Right, our other options are not that great. She can self-medicate, which is fine. <clears throat> but I think we'd be better off. Yeah. By the way, look at how bad instruction is. Compared to tactics. Speed is a big deal, but I don't think it's that big a deal. Stick and move. Float like a butterfly, etc. like a bee. The light. The promise of safety. Right. There's no way I'm going back for the uh, for the statue now to get the damage buff. I thought it was an option, but that was before uh, that was before we managed to get so far without getting into another fight. Unfortunately, we have not gotten a scout these last couple of hallways. You know, Wayne, carrying the treasure home is not quite as difficult as you're uh, sort of implying. I've had heroes die in a lot of stupid ways in Darkest Dungeon. I once, for real, had a guy die because of starvation. I don't think that that was in the Let's Play. But, um... <clears throat> Yeah, I had a hero starve to death. He was on death's door from a... I was pushing toward the end of a... of a dungeon. Damn madmen are so fast. Fortunately, he's toward the front of the enemy party, so we can uh, ravage him pretty quickly here. Uh, I was headed toward the end of a dungeon. I was out of shovels. Encountered a passage blockage, which... I don't have to tell you, always annoying. Devastating blow. And, uh, I decided, well, we, we gotta push on. The end of the hallway is the last room of the dungeon. With, like, we need to hit that, and then we're, we're golden. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. And, uh, I did that. The damage that it does to your party member when you tear down one of those things by hand, uh, took one of my guys to death's door, and then the next step past that, I had a hunger event that I didn't have enough hung uh, food for, and he died. Died from the starvation damage. Um, that said, I had heroes die in a lot of stupid ways, is the point I was making there. I've had a lot of dumb things happen in Darkest Dungeon. I have never had a failure in an attempt to carry home treasure. So Wayne, back off. Don't be so gloomy about every damn thing. That bit kind of got away from me. I was trying to... That was supposed to be a, a lot lighter and faster and funnier. But then I was... I got into that story about uh, the thing. Right, this guy's dead. I just hope that our occultist gets to go. Nope. Alright, a little bit of extra food. I'm happy to find that. Uh, it is still the case that we don't particularly need holy water. We don't really need bandages either. Yeah. We're more likely to find a curio involving holy water than bandages. I think I made a mistake earlier when I threw away, um, when I threw away that holy water while holding on to the bandages. You're at nine. This skill has a ton of bonus crit. You can see down here, his, the crit chance with this skill is over twenty percent. So I'd really like to attack. But this dude is at 9. These guys crit pretty hard. They leave a bleed behind. Alright, let's just... Let's go ahead and throw a heal out. It was a pretty good heal. It's probably too important not to do. Alright, if we get the pushback on this, that's fantastic. That means our Crusader can wallop this uh, Bone Court here. Maybe even kill him if we're lucky. Well, 8 to 15. His speed is 8. So if we stun him, he probably will still get a turn, right? He'll probably not act this turn and then act at the beginning of the next turn. Yeah, let's go for the kill. Alright. That was our, our only realistic hope of preventing him from acting at all. Okay, that's not the end of the world. It's going to cost us uh, one move to get the Crusader back in line.
Do I take that move at this point? Or do I just stun her? Yeah, let's just stun her. The Crusader's turn isn't that valuable. If we move him up... If we use the, um... The Plague Doctor to move the cult, the Crusader up, all he would have done was attack a Bone Rabble. Which I don't care about. So, yeah, screw it. Um, also, in case you don't know, these guys don't have a good attack from this position. He'll do, uh, Stumbling Scratch, I believe it's called from the third position, which moves him forward and does a, a teensy amount of damage. An, an amount of damage I do not care about. So he's effectively not in the fight right now. Yeah. Oh no, not three. Um, so control enemy positioning. It does matter. Well, that's annoying. Okay. Reynolds out of the fight. Unfortunate, but true. Okay. So we do still have to hit this guy, unfortunately. I would have been a lot more sanguine to use the uh, stab on the witch if it was guaranteed to kill her on hit. Unfortunately, the base damage of the level 1 weapon is just too low. Obviously, our occultist just doesn't have anything of value to do right now. Easy enough. We had some setbacks there. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Actually. There is some chance that this dungeon contains a secret room still. There are uh, a couple of hallways yet unscouted. So we're going to push on without opening this and we'll come back if we don't find a use, uh, if we don't find a secret room. Or some other use for our key. Also, I can probably afford to eat at this point. Uh, we're not going to get three hunger events in what remains of this dungeon. Ah, curse you. Curse you, sneaky, dodgy spiders. Actually, very difficult to hit. 15, uh, 15 dodge. Feels like a lot in the early game. All right, he's not likely to get... A one-hit kill, so we'll uh, steal the spiders next turn. Uh, who's got higher speed? You have one, you have three, you have six. You know, I don't know if the plus three speed affects their turn order on this turn. Do they move up by three points? I honestly don't know. Because it might just affect their speed roll for the next turn. All right? Obviously, they've already rolled speed for this turn. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted. The purpose is made clear. Okay, surprise. That's lovely. Uh, damn it. Alright, we're going to do this because the pushback and stun is like removing him from combat for two turns, like I discussed earlier. Uh, well, she won't get a turn, she won't get an action at the beginning of the coming turn at least. She'll blight out before then.
Okay, I think that's lethal on him. Yep. This is going pretty well. Can you move two? I'm pretty sure that the occult, uh, the Crusader only gets to move one space per turn. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Ouch. I uh, I don't know why I thought he had two in two stacks of blight on him. So I endured an attack that I didn't really have to do endure because I could have just stabbed him. I think this should be uh, this should be the end of combat, not just here but possibly for the entire dungeon. Let's see, what do we drop? I don't know whether or not there's a blockage in this hallway. I guess if there is, we just will walk away from it. Maybe it was better to drop the torch. I don't know. Here. Get an aura that gives you prot. That's interesting. The camp buffs display that they're still up, but they say zero combats now. Odd little bug. Good dodge. Great dodge, in fact. We managed to come through this with uh, very little stress on our heroes. Go in here looking for treasure and also a scout. Scout does not come. So we'll check out what this curio is. Will I engage in combat just for the loot from the end of combat? Yes, I absolutely will. Yeah, that's totally worth doing. Something cool? No, just a torch. Sometimes you find other stuff in there. You can find a little bit of gold or... Um, um, deeds and stuff. I found uh, I have found heirlooms. Ooh. Had to throw a little bit of stress out there before the uh, before the dungeon could end. Okay, two deeds for doing that. Totally worthwhile. But a victory nonetheless. Disappointed that we didn't manage to find a secret room, but we'll uh, we'll go spend our key back here. We will, of course, kill the light before doing so, and then I'm not going to bother with the uh, with the trap. Hey, treasure! Uh, here, put this on so that we can carry it home. Uh, in some circumstances, I would go over here and hit this trap to reduce somebody's stress, but nobody in this party is particularly great at relieve, at uh, disarming traps, and failing a disarm is the same thing as being hit by the trap, which is to say that it inflicts a lot of stress. So whoever I tried it on actually has a pretty good chance of gaining enough stress that they might need to uh, spend a week in the Abbey. Obviously not what we're looking for. Uh, so yeah, not, not a terrible haul. Still started getting our, our legs under us, but we've got 11 deeds to work with now, so that's good. Stress Eater is a real bummer that's, uh, that's maybe worth removing. The plume and the pistol. A fitting end to my folly. And a curse upon us all. Okay. A sister of Babel, pious and unrelenting. I've now opened up the blacksmith and the, the guild. Once again, the forge stands ready to make weapons of war. 
pretty cool. Make no mistake. We will face ever greater threats. Our soldiers must be ready. Indeed. Well, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Darkest Dungeon Plus, Darkest Dungeon Hard Mode. Um, come back next time when we will continue to do stuff that would be completely, t uh, completely tedious and trivial on normal difficulty and see if it is indeed still completely tedious and trivial on hard mode. We'll see you then.